In this video, I'm going to show you how to create correlation heat maps and their common variants. And we are also going to make sure that we're using the correct color palette because ggplot is not necessarily doing the right thing when it's creating a heat map. So with that said, let's dive in. In my quarter file, I've already put in a small code chunk that loads the tidyverse and grabs the numeric columns from the Parma Penguins dataset. If you execute this code, you will get something like this. Now, if you want to compute the correlations, you will just have to pass this to the core function. And with that, you get a correlation matrix that you can save into a new variable. And even though this is a neat overview over all the correlations between the numeric columns, this is not a great format for ggplot. So let's rearrange this a little bit. So what we do is we take our matrix, we pass it to s tibble, and if we do it like this, then we get rid of the row names that we already have inside of our matrix. And this is not something we want. So this is why we set the row names to some variable name. In this case, I call it var a. And then we can use pivot longer to rearrange everything but the var a column and put in the names to var b and the values to correlation. And now we have something that is in a nice format for ggplot. So let's save this into a new variable. Now what we can do is take this data set and pass it to ggplot. And for the x and y aesthetic, we'll use the two columns var a and var b. And then we can pass this to gm tile. And if we execute this, we'll get, well, a couple of tiles, but this is not really what we're going for. So let's set the fill aesthetic to the correlation. And that way we get something that at least resembles correlation heat maps. And if we want, we can also set the color to black. So this way, all of the tiles have an outline. Also, what is commonly done is that you add the GM text to put in the correlation value inside of these tiles. So this is why we have to set the label aesthetic and set those to the rounded correlations. And when we put this in there, we get a lot of numbers into the tiles and that way we can read off the correlations. Next, let us throw in a theme minimal where we set the base size and the base font family. And then we can also specify some labels for the X and Y aesthetic. We actually don't need anything for the fill aesthetic. We can set this to correlation with a capital C. And for the title, we can just put in variables of the Parma Penguins dataset, just something generic for the purpose of this tutorial. So we got something that resembles the correlation heat maps, but typically you have the same things on the diagonal that goes from top to bottom and not the one from bottom to top. So everything needs to be flipped around. So this is why we need to reorder the things that are on the Y axis. So first, let us extract all of the variable names that we have. We can throw this into a vector called var names. And that way we have something that can specify the order for our X and Y axis. So that is why we create a new data set based on the original cov table where we mutate the columns. Namely, we specify that the var A column should be a factor. It should have the same values, but the levels should be set to the var names. And then we do the same thing for the var B column, but we have to make sure that the levels are the other way around. So that's why we put in a revert in there and then once we have that, we can replace our data set here. And if we execute this now, everything is flipped around just like we wanted it to. So now we have something that resembles a correlation heat map, but the color scale isn't chosen correctly. You see, what we have here is basically a sequential color palette that has one bluish color that gets darker or lighter depending on the value. But for correlations, you need a diverging color palette. Basically, that is a palette that consists out of two colors with some middle ground in between. And that's exactly what we have for correlations. We have plus one and negative one as the extremes and zero as the neutral ground in between. And our colors should reflect that. So this is why we have to throw in a scale fill layer to change the color scale here. In this case, this means that we use a scale fill gradient two layer because we need to specify two colors, namely one for the high color. We can also specify the mid color, but more importantly, we also have to specify the low colors. And you can see here we have two opposing colors for the two opposing ranges of the values. And now if we execute this, we get something which is much closer to a correlation heat map. But you will want to make sure that you set the limits to negative one and one. So that way you specify that your color scale covers the whole range of negative one to one. And if you want to make sure that the midpoint is really set at zero, you can just throw this in there. In this case, it didn't change anything at all, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right? And this reminds me, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to let me know that you did like this video because this will help me feel good about myself so that I can keep on making more videos 
which might be good for you too. Thank you for that. And now let's get back to the video. Next, we should probably make the labels inside of the tiles a bit nicer. For example, they could be larger and bolder so that they are easier legible. And also for the labels that are inside of dark colored tiles, we should probably switch the text color to white. So that's why we go into the GM text layer, make some room here, and then we can work on things like the color. As I've just said, we want to make sure that things are differently colored depending on the strength of the correlation. So we're going to use if else. And when the absolute value of the correlation is larger than 0.6, we're going to use white. And in the other case, we're going to use black. If we execute this, we can see that some of the text colors changed, but still not everything is really well legible. So that is why we change the size, set the font family and make everything bold. In a case like this, I would also prefer to have meaningful labels on the X and Y axis and not the variable names and, and instead something like English bill length in millimeters or weight in grams, something like that. So this is why we should probably change the labels before they even go into the ggplot. So this is why we take our data set and pass it to mutate where we modify the var a column with fct relabel. This fct relabel function is a function that can take a factor like var a and modify the levels and the labels. What it needs for that is a function. So we're going to define an anonymous function with this shorthand notation for an anonymous function. And then we're going to use case match to translate all of the variable names to meaningful English labels. And once we know how that works, we can do the exact same thing with the second variable. And with that, we can save our result into new data set and replace our data set with the ggplot. And that way we get nicer labels for our chart. Speaking about nicer labels, I usually like it when the labels are really close to bars or tiles in a heat map like this. You can see here, that there is some weird spacing and you can still see the grid lines here of the underlying ggplot. So this is why I usually throw in a chord Cartesian layer. So let's put this in there. And in there I put expand to false and this will get rid of the excess expansion. Nice, with that we have a pretty decent heat map, but I want to focus on one thing that happens all of the time with heat maps like this and specifically with correlation heat maps. It's when there is not enough room. Let's make this artificially smaller so that we can enforce this. We can see here that the labels on the X axis can overlap quite fast. And what a lot of people do is they flip around the labels, they rotate them so that they are legible again. Here, I want to give you a couple of alternatives before you do that. If you have a whole lot of variables, in that case, you probably cannot get away with doing something else. But I would suggest you try very hard before you rotate because rotating is always annoying for the reader because he has to flip around his head to figure out what is what. So instead, I want to give you a couple of tricks that might help you. The first thing I try is to move the legend to the top. So you just throw in a theme and set legend position to top. This will give you some more room for your labels on the x-axis. But of course, the color bar might suck. So you have to throw in a guides layer. And in the philosthetic, set the guide color bar so that you can change the bar width to something better. This already gives you some space, but with the flipper length, for example, we're already cutting it close and with more variable, it might be tricky. One thing you could try is to, inside of the guides layer, set the guide for the X aesthetic, namely the guide axis, and set n dot dodge to 2. With that, when you execute this, you can see that every other label is on some other level. So this is a neat trick that can help you to avoid overlapping the x-axis labels. You could even increase the level of n dodge to three, and you will see that always three will go one level down and then it starts over again. This is something that can even help you with many variables. In this case, you can just leave it at two. It works pretty well with that. And if you really must, if you see no other way around, then you could rotate the labels on the x-axis via the theme layer, I'm not going to show you that because I really think it is not a nice thing to do. But if you must do that, you can find the code for that in the blog post for this video. The link for that is in the description. Instead, what I'd like to do in this video here is to focus on something else, namely on some alternatives to this common look. For example, a lot of people like to use circles instead of tiles and then also map the size of the circles to the correlation. Basically, this works by replacing GM tile with GM point. So let's get rid of this part here, put in GM point in there, and then you can set the aesthetics, namely the fill aesthetic again, 
and the size aesthetic this time can be set to the absolute value of the correlation because you don't care about positive or negative correlation you will only want to see wrong correlations get larger points and then you can set the color to black which will give your points a black outline and you have to set shape to 21 in order to have the fill aesthetic you could do all of this with color instead of fill but then you'd have to change your scale fill layer here as well so i just went with fill and shape 21 and then if i put a plus in here then we get a chart that looks like this well this doesn't look particularly nice so let's fix a couple of things first let us get rid of the chord cartesian expansion because points get cut off so let's comment this out next we don't need a legend for the size of the points so let's in our guides layer let's set size to guide none and now we should move on to the pressing issue of the points looking terrible so let's throw in a scale size layer scale size area and in there we can set the limits and we can also set the maximum size to something larger so that the points become larger but there's no way to guarantee that the labels will fit into these smaller circles so we should remove the labels here and that is why we comment that part out as well and that way we have a nice correlation chart another common thing with correlation heat maps or circles like this is to use only the lower or upper half you see on the diagonal you will always have a correlation of one a perfect correlation and the diagonal serves as like a mirror everything that is on this side is the exact same thing on that side so this is why in a lot of cases people like to only use the things that are at the bottom here and the way to make this happen is to simply filter out the lower triangle here so let's try this by filtering this data set here so what we do is we take this data set and then we first compute a couple of new variables namely we transform the factors to numerics using that the factor data type behind the scenes uses just integers to encode the levels so this is why the first level will get number one the second level will get number two and so on and if we do this for level a and level b accounting for the fact that we have used the reverse order for variable b then we can compute the levels of these two factors so if you look at level a and level b you can see here the levels and then you just have to make sure that you compare these numbers here so this is why you modify this correlation column by comparing the levels and if one level is lower than the other level you set correlation to an a so that's what you do here and then once you've done that you can save this into new data set that you call filtered cop and then you replace your data set for the plot and that way you get a nice result that only has the lower triangle here you will get warning messages though because you have set things to na but that's no problem you know where the warning messages are coming from and the reason why we set this to na and didn't just filter everything out is because we still want to get the complete axes here otherwise if we filter something out then we would for example get rid of one row and one column so that's why we did that here and now what we could also do this is another alternative is to use the circles and put the correlations there where the space is free now everything is symmetric so you should know where the correlation for this will be somewhere around there not somewhere around there actually there and that way you know where to put the correlations and how to read this chart if you throw in some text there so this is why we can put in our gm text part here again but we have to make sure that we do not use the complete data set but only the filtered data set but if we use the filtered curves here then we throw in the labels for these exact points but that's not what we want we want to have everything in reverse so we just have to create a reverted data set let's call it filtered curve ref and what we need to do is to use the opposite inequality here and then when we do that and use the new data set then we get everything quite nicely actually we don't get everything quite nicely we still have the part here where the colors are different so let's fix the colors and set everything to black now we're good but with the grid it's a bit annoying that the texts are kind of in front of the grid and it makes it a little bit tedious to read but one trick we can do is to throw a gm tile layer at the bottom of this because we only set stuff like the fill aesthetic and the size and whatnot in specific layers this layer here will only use the coordinates and by default it will just use some values so let's set this to fill white and color to I don't know gray 70 something light to have a grid but not something that is really wrong okay so this will just use some default values instead of having a whole lot of different colors and if we execute this 
we can see now that we have a nice grid the labels are nicer to read but we see here now now that we have the tiles we don't actually need the access expansion anymore so let's put in this comma here again and with that we have created another nice version of correlation heat maps if you enjoyed this video you may also enjoy my data visualization course where i help our users to create insightful data visualizations using ggplot you can find a link to that in the description below have a nice day thank you for watching and i will see you next time